I hope you've taken some time to read through what I just posted today on day one about is sugar addiction real, how it works, how our brains work. If you haven't, please go back and do that. It's so, so important that you understand the way that the reward system works in our brain. I'm not going to go over all of that again in this video. What I wanted to talk to you about is actually who is most susceptible to sugar addictions. Um, this was very fascinating to me. Basically, your genetics can predispose you to being, um, you know, susceptible to sugar and food addiction. If your mother, while you were in her womb, ate sugary, fatty sweets and carbs, your genetic makeup is already predisposed to be addicted to those types of foods. And conversely, if your mother, maybe with your sister or brother, ate healthier foods, their genetics would set them up to be predisposed to eating and craving healthier foods. So that kind of sucks if that's what happened to you. Um, but that is something you need to be aware of because that means that you're already fighting against your genetics. Now, the cool thing is the more often that you make positive, healthy choices, you can actually rewrite and rewire your genetics. Your DNA can actually change based upon the choices that you consistently make because your body is, cons is constantly adjusting to the environment, to what you're feeding it, to the thoughts that you have. Even your thoughts, I'm not going to get into this, but positive thoughts release certain chemicals into your brain that affects your entire body. Negative stressful thoughts release other chemicals in your brain that affect your body. So your body is constantly changing depending on the circumstances around it to help you survive, to help you thrive. And so the, the reason why if your brother or sister, if your mom was eating better and healthier when she was pregnant with your brother or sister, why they have an easier time eating healthy foods is because her positive choices were changing her genetics, which were changing the baby's genetics. So even if you were born already predisposed to just crave junk food, you can change that. Not only can you change that for yourself, but if you're a woman, you can change that for any children that you have. If you choose healthy choices while you're pregnant, you're giving your baby a head start and you're changing your own genetics as well. So that is super cool, but just be aware that if you have a history of unhealthy eating in your family, that's something that you're going to have to deal with and that means you're more susceptible to food addiction. Also, childhood trauma or early life trauma. Um, food is a way that we handle stress. So if you've been, if you've read the, if you read the science behind food addiction, when you eat sweet foods, salty, starchy foods, it releases the dopamine, which is a pleasure releaser in your brain. And not only do you crave it because you crave that pleasure, but it's also your body's way to neutralize when there's a lot of stress being released in your brain. So if you were a child or a young adult and you had some sort of trauma happen in your life that released large amounts of stress in your brain. In order to survive, your body craved sugary sweet foods which you would eat, releasing the dopamine, the pleasure chemical, to neutralize the stress in your brain. To help you not have a mental breakdown, to help you not go crazy, it's a way of medicating yourself. And so if you've had a trauma like that in your early uh, adulthood or childhood, you're more susceptible to food addiction and you're more susceptible to have habits where when you feel stressful, you crave certain foods. Why do, why do we want a, a gallon of ice cream when we've gotten a bad breakup with our boyfriend or girlfriend? Because there's a lot of stress in our brain and we're trying to, it's our body's way of trying to neutralize that and equalize that. So be aware if that is if that's happened to you in your past that that's a habit that whether you're aware of it or not you probably have. Um, and then the third the third way that you may be predisposed to food addiction is if you have addiction in your family, um, and if you have you know a history of addiction 
whether it, it doesn't have to be food. It could be alcohol addiction, gambling, smoking, drugs, whatever. If that history exists in your family, you are going to be more susceptible to food addiction. And also, as a bonus, women are more susceptible to food addiction as well. So hooray for that. But um, I just I wanted to just share with you guys and be really vulnerable with you guys that I pretty much have all of these things. Actually, I think my mom ate pretty healthy while I was in her womb. My mom's awesome. Um, but I have, my grandfather died very, relatively young. Um, he was addicted to gambling, smoking, and drinking. He died of lung cancer. And that addiction, addictive gene is strong in my family. And it's, and, and I know, knowing that actually gives me power. Um, and as a young adult and a teenager, I struggled heavily with depression. And I'm not ashamed to share these things with you guys because um, I don't think there's a person in this world who has a perfect family and a perfect childhood and a perfect young adulthood and never had any trauma and doesn't have any dysfunction. And I just feel like in order to help myself, I have to be real with myself. It's time to cut the BS and try to put up this facade of everything's okay. Putting up that facade of everything's okay is only going to hinder you from growth, from confronting what's going on in your life. It's happening, whether you acknowledge it or not. Not acknowledging it is a hindrance to breaking free and to moving forward and to having growth. So I'm not afraid to confront those things. I'm not afraid to realize that they're there, to realize that I have young adult childhood trauma. I have addiction in my family. I have those issues. And I'm not afraid to confront them. We all have them. Um, your life is not what has happened to you. Your life is what, how you respond to that. What are you going to do? Pretend like it didn't happen? Suppress it? Pretend like everything's okay, like I'm actually the perfect person and I've never struggled? Or am I going to say, okay, this is, this is my life. This is what I have to deal with. This is who I am, who my family is. Now I have the choice to confront it, to understand it, and to try to be stronger, and to grow, and to move forward. So my, my hope for you is that you would look at your past, look at your family, look at your life. It may be scary, it may bring up stuff that you don't wanna deal with, but you know what, it happened. You can't change that. What you can change is how you move forward from here. If you need to get counseling, get counseling. I know I have. Guys, let's stop the BS that everything's perfect and just say stuff happened and I'm I'm now I'm going to just going to I'm just going to make it right. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to be better. I'm going to get help. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to honor myself. I'm going to choose to be different and do things differently. Just because for generations there's addiction in my family doesn't mean that I have to. But I have to acknowledge that. I have to acknowledge that that happened. And so I just want to encourage you to be brave. To realize that facing it and overcoming it and moving forward, as hard as that is, is actually going to be easier and better than just living with it under the rug. That, they're, they're both hard. Don't think that living with it under the rug means that it's the easy road, because I think you'll find that it's actually not. So I would encourage you to look at some of these reasons why you may be susceptible to food addiction and sugar addiction. Try to deal with it. Get counseling if you need to. For me, writing is super therapeutic. Write it out. Or do a video diary. Sit in front of a video and nobody needs to see it but you sometimes just need to verbalize it and get it out and realize, okay, that felt good. Now I can move on. Now I can confront my food addiction and overcome it. So there is healing that needs to take place here. Before you can shed physical weight, you need to shed mental and emotional weight. This is scary, but it will help you. And that's my burden with this group. I want to help you. I want to help you and the only way I know how is to encourage you to lift up the rug and deal with what's underneath it.
so you can move forward because that's the only way I have found help and healing for myself. So I hope that that is encouraging to you. Take a deep breath, <laughs> get some time to yourself, and start processing this because you have an amazing life to live. You have amazing things ahead of you. And I don't want anything to slow you down or to hinder you or to stop you from being as amazing as you can be.